Today we're joined by Dr. Alexander Antanasiewicz, uh, who is working at the Scripps uh, with Andrew Ward. He's one of our new CRIM fellows. Thanks a lot for joining us today, Alex. So we're really curious to get to know a little bit about you. Um, so first off, why don't we start with, tell us in simple terms what you're working on and what you hope to achieve. We have been um, working on different structural biology-based methods for analysis of immune response that's elicited uh, by different HIV vaccine candidates. Um, those structural biology methods are all based on uh, electromicroscopy. And uh, specifically, my role in the lab has been to a, uh, design some of these uh, vaccine candidates or immunogens, as we call them, and then be um, work on some of these high resolution methods to really characterize uh, the elicited antibodies uh, and learn more about them. Specifically, the proposal is about, and specifically what my research is going to be about in the future, is, is the latter part, which is the development of novel methods for characterization of, uh, of immune response. Is it fair to say, do you think, that one of the real challenges in making a vaccine for HIV is that all of the different viruses, even inside the body of one person, look slightly different from each other, and it's hard for the immune system to learn which precisely is the right immune response to generate against the virus as a whole in order to prevent infection. Uh, absolutely. Um, and that is um, the, the major challenge when it comes to dealing with HIV. Um, and you, you see, every time we try to design a vaccine, a vaccine is going to be based on a single virus or a single species of, uh, of a virus. And, or so that, or that was the case, at least with all the classical vaccines that are available, including the COVID vaccines nowadays. Um, and when you uh, apply that, and when you um, uh, apply that onto uh, real patients uh, or animals, you actually elicit uh, or induce an immune response that ends up being specific to that specific strain. However, with HIV, it's, yeah. there's a lot more um, uh, random mutagen mutations that are uh, that are happening, or what we are trying to develop over the course of uh, like the past uh, 10 to 20 years is a vaccine that's capable of triggering antibodies and triggering the type of immune response that would not be specific to that uh, strain that was originally used for uh, the immunization, but actually that specific uh, that, that has affinity and can recognize and uh, neutralize a wide variety of HIV strains. There's no question that HIV is really an insanely complicated virus and has a lot of different facets and different directions that you could go in research. But what made you interested in HIV? It is one of the greatest medical problems that we have right now and is one of the, the greatest scientific challenges that we have ever had to address. Um, uh, second, I, I guess I, I really appreciate the environment uh, in the fact that we can collaborate with so many different labs. For example, we specialize in structural biology. There are labs that specialize in animal work and immunizations. There are labs that specialize in computational protein design that have never actually worked with animals. And we're all in the same room discussing, talking about the best way to move forward and the best way to design these vaccines. And I think that's really powerful. But I also like the fact that in so many ways, HIV vaccine design is also pushing the limits of, of knowledge that we, that we have in, in the world of immunology. So what we have seen in the past, and our lab, myself, I have participated in some of these studies where we use HIV reagents to test some of the basic immunological concepts. All right, so. If we inject a vaccine, what happens to it? How, how quickly does it get traffic to lymph nodes? Uh -huh. How quickly does it get retained within the lymph nodes? How quickly does the immune response get developed? And what kind of immune response are we developing? So we learn a lot about just basic concepts in immunology, and we then apply them very quickly uh, onto the next generation of HIV vaccines. And I think uh, just being in this field, you're at the forefront of several different areas and we're trying to all apply the best that we got. What are the next steps in your career? I, I would like to uh, start uh, my own lab uh, when and uh, if available. I Because 
I really enjoy doing research. I really enjoy teaching, but I also really enjoy mentoring. Um, I think those are, it's actually the most rewarding part uh, of, of being in the lab, just having the ability to um, uh, help the next generation of scientists to first get introduced into science, but then really become power engines and that drive the progress further. I, I think I, um, I find that even more satisfying than me myself completing an experiment and the experiment being, being successful. Well, so, of course, from our perspective, you are the next generation. You've just received true. the Crim Fellowship. Yes. Uh, I, what, does that, what do you think that, that fellowship will mean for your career? It presents a major boost when it comes to any type of career-based efforts. And, and it, I think it does that in, in like several ways. On one side, it, it is a recognition that what you are proposing now when you're just starting your own independent path and when you're very insecure about uh, all of the different things that, are, uh, that you're trying to do, this is a nice recognition. Um, people are reading and saying, huh, that, that's, that, that is very interesting and we would like to see that done. Uh, and you seem to be the person to do it. So there is, it's, it's a good uh, method for validation. Then it provides resources to actually pursue these and test, uh, we'll see hopefully, uh, eventually it, it leads to something that we can use for vaccine design in, at the very least it will lead to some amount of knowledge that we can then use to design um, novel immunogens. But um, my hope is that it will actually lead to development of novel reagents that we can directly apply.